think of think of revenue think of sales for an organization the the relevance of that that very terminology right let's let's appreciate that every organization would like to have as much sales as possible or or even higher right why why do they do that i mean i think the whole idea is to of course understand that sales reflect your growth sales reflects your performance sales reflects your market share and and certainly everybody would like to have the maximum out of it but then imagine you as an organization or one organization is unable to do sales the market conditions are bad covid you know technological obsolescence new compete and what not right so how do you how do you manage sales well one of the things that somebody would try to do is manipulate with the number okay you show sales when they don't exist you do fake billing you do uh you know sales of inventory when in reality it is not so 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 from that context you 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 would like to understand the the relevance of the standard on the revenue from contract with the customers now no broadly what the standard says it says that it's a five step criteria okay while we don't want to go technical about that but this these five steps try to address some questions okay and those questions are are you selling first of all that's the first question the second question is what is that you are selling okay the third question is at what price are you selling it and then whatever you are selling that the second question those items are you are you selling at or what at, at what price are you selling those items now okay so this is this is the total price and this is the price of individual items and then finally and a very important one is when are you selling okay it's all about the timing part of it as far as the final question is concerned and on those questions these steps are determined the first step says identify the contract with customers okay are you really selling something or are you just trying to fake it okay i mean you are you are one shop and and there is a compet which is you know which is the other shop you you merely sell to each other there is no there is no commercial substance you want to call it a sale the answer is no it is not a sale there is no there is no business reason to do that and accounting prohibits that to be called as a sale okay you are let's say a pharmaceutical company and uh, you know you are doing some researches which which you don't want to continue with but what you do is you you what is the outcome of that research you 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 transfer that to some some other pharmaceutical company you you in a way the word is you sell it to another pharmaceutical company is it a sale again the standard says no it is not a sale because that is not something that you do in the normal course of business it is just one off transaction so that is where you start looking at the word identify the contract with the customers wherein you are saying that are you really selling or are you just you know kind of creating something in the books okay the second part that comes identify the performance obligations that is what is it that you are selling okay now of course we don't we don't want to discuss it in very detail around each of these steps otherwise the first step itself is fairly fairly comprehensive okay the second part that comes is identify the performance obligations that is what are you selling are you selling one promise or are you selling multiple promises okay imagine you want to buy a mobile phone and uh, the the telecom company says that you know you can buy this handset today for 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 a price whatever the price is and uh, will give you you know two years data free okay well nothing in the world is free actually so so what are we saying now is that it's not a, it's not a single promise it's not it's not only one thing that the company is trying to give it to you right it's not just the phone it's also the data it's also the service right so we started looking at that if you are selling something 
be, be very clear about what are you selling. So we are saying that there could be multiple promises involved. There could be multiple performance obligations to be met by the seller. This standard is purely about the seller's accounting, of course. We don't have to worry about the buyer side of that. So that is where the second step comes in. Identify the performance obligations. I would use the word promises. Okay. Identify the performance obligations where we say that what is that you are selling. The first step was are you selling? The second step is what is that you are selling? Okay. Now comes the third step where we say that determine the transaction price. At what price are you selling? Okay. Are you saying that for example, you know, you, you uh, buy a car from me or I sell you a car and uh, I'll charge you, for example, let's, say, let's use that perspective. So there's a car being sold at $10,000, which is the cash price. Okay. But you're saying that, you know, uh, you can actually, let's say, you know, take it uh, on an EMI option for two years where you would pay, for example, $500 per month, right? Now that would make it, of course, 500 into 24, which would be, of course, $12,000, right? So, when you say that you're determining the transaction price, at what price are you selling? Well, essentially, the car's value is still $10,000. You you're making a sale today for $10,000, but it is just the, you know, the finance component which comes into the picture. You are paying something extra because you're not paying it today. You're not paying for the car. You're paying for the time that you are, you know, allowing the, uh, you know, uh, you're taking from the from the from the seller. So, so essentially, from the seller's perspective, the the, the value of the car is still ten thousand. The extra money of two thousand dollars is because of the the time that he gives you or the credit period that he lends you for that thing comes into the picture. So, you need to start looking at at what price you're selling is 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 important, and that's where the third step, determining the transaction price is concerned. Okay. The fourth part, it says that what are you selling and at what price, okay? Now, this would be, again, using the example of that mobile phone. We are saying that you buy a handset, let's say for $1,000 and the data of two years is given to you for free, which means that the invoice value is, is $1,000. As a customer, you're paying $1,000 and that's the end of the story. But essentially, from the seller's perspective, so this is the, the price charged or the consideration. And then we're saying that, you know, that you know what the fair value of this handset, for example, is still $1,000 and this data would have probably come for $200, which means that something worth $1,200 is sold to you at $1,000, okay? Now, what does it mean? It means that, ideally speaking, this $1,000 should be allocated to both handset as well as the data. Okay, and that is where it's saying, what are you selling? You're selling handset and as well as the data. At what price individually? Because handset would be sold right now, but the data would be sold over two years of time. Okay, which simply means if I were to look at the allocated price. I would simply say this is 1000 over 1200 
into the price which is which is this value by the way right and this one would be 200 divided by 1200 into 1000 this will be 167 this would be 833 that's a kind of a reference that we want to make around this okay and finally in the in the, in this instance even the step five or the fifth question is also answered when are you selling are you selling it right now or are you selling it over two years are you selling it at a point in time or over the period of time okay at a point in time just now or over a period of time over the period you recognize revenue like in this case this 167 will be recognized over two years and this 833 will be recognized the moment you hand over the phone or you give a control to the buyer the moment you transfer the control to the buyer that is where this revenue of 833 will be recognized all right so this completes our broader summary of the standard or the discussion on this topic which is revenue from contract with customers